Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, aka huge Chiefs fan, huge football fan, but also an entrepreneur, the owner and operator of MommyIncome.com and the Amazon Files and multiple businesses and multiple brands. Um, if this is your first time here, I never say that, but welcome. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. Today is not our typical show where we're giving like business info and how to fix your Amazon stuff and how to scale up and how to make more money and all this stuff. This is actually just a strategic, motivating, inspiring um, cut from the cloth of football. Why? Because this week embarks the very first week of NFL football season and I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan for many, many years. Although I was born and raised in Southeast Michigan, um, I have been a Chiefs fan since I was 10 years old. So if you have heard this story before, just roll your eyes and, and just wait for me to be done. If you haven't, um, people always ask me, you're from Michigan and from the Detroit area. Why aren't you a Lions fan? Well, first of all, isn't it obvious why I'm not a Lions fan? <laughs> no, seriously though, um, when my dad used to always watch football and I would sit on the couch with him and I'm like, hey, who's playing? What's this team? How, what is, I wanted to understand football and who are we rooting for? And he pointed out the Lions and he's like, this is the home team. This is the Lions. This is who we root for. And I was like, wait, what? What are those colors? Those are like silver and blue and they were just ugly. And I just didn't, I wasn't on board. I was like, no, I look way better in red. Just saying. So I was like, who's this other team? He's like, oh, that's the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm like, I like them. I like their logo. I was literally 10. I was picking my football team based on my own fashion sense, which I don't have very much of. Um, but I knew I liked red and white and yellow a lot better than blue and silver. So, so be it. I became a fan at that age. On my honeymoon, we went to a Chiefs game. Um, we've been back many times to Arrowhead and watched the Chiefs. So I have been a longtime fan um, long before Mr. Mahomes and said team have won Super Bowls. So it's such a sweet victory when we our team wins the Super Bowl after you've been waiting literally 20 some years. So the Lions, maybe there's still hope for you, but don't judge me because I'm a Chiefs fan. Um, so anyway. I'm a huge football fan and I want to relate business and entrepreneurship to football. Why? Because I don't know, I speak football <laughs> and I speak entrepreneur and I speak whatever. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about those things and just like pick out some things where I, I use this language in my own business as like joking or puns or whatever, just try to get through life. But there is so much relatable in football and in entrepreneurship that I just wanted to pour out some correlations and some things that we can take from the playbook of football. Uh, so I'm going to talk, talk about that in just a moment. I want to remind you that this is the last opportunity this next week to sign up for the bundle challenge. Now, typical challenges are, are kind of run to kickstart everybody. This challenge is actually for wholesale bundle students only because many of you have expressed that you just struggle to get started. There's so much information and it's overwhelming and just figuring out what to do when and how and how to execute it is really difficult for you. So we are doing a challenge. It's going to be about 40 days. There's going to be live weekly calls, a workbook with homework, and you will launch your bundle and be done with the challenge by October 16th. So it's really only four and a half. It's, I, I don't want to call it five weeks because it's not quite five weeks. It's about 40 days. So by October 16th, you could be launching a bundle on Amazon just in time for the holidays, for Q4, for Thanksgiving, for Christmas. If that's something you're interested in, this is more of a hands-on, uh, hand-holding opportunity. We're not really learning anything new. So that's something that I really want to clarify when it comes to the bundle challenge. This is for wholesale bundle students. You've already learned the material. You've already looked, looked at, listened to, you've been through the framework, you know what you're doing, or at least you have an idea of what's expected. So that when we go through the homework, um, the homework is breaking the course down into actionable steps over the course of approximately 40 days. Every week, there's five days of homework, there's fill in the blanks, there is check boxes, there is you, if you follow the steps, you will be launching your bundle within 40 days. And when I say launching, I mean, it will be available and ready for sale on Amazon, depending on your suppliers. So that's really exciting. And I'm really excited to take, we have um, a ton of people signed up already, and I'm really excited to serve them in that way. And it's for wholesale bundle students only. If you're not a student, you can go ahead and go to mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe, and you can get our free training and see if a wholesale bundle system is right for you to see if you're ready to embark on doing Amazon a completely different way than most people are doing it.
So mommyincome.com forward slash challenge is the bundle challenge. You can learn more about that. As a matter of fact, we even are going to even have a printed workbook that you can um, supplement with that. And then you can keep that forever. Every You can literally launch a bundle every 40 days from now on. So I would love to see you guys in the challenge. Uh, the challenge is built for you and for accountability. We have the course. We can build a bundle without a challenge for sure. Um, but a lot of you guys are getting stuck or you're like, oh, I'll keep doing that. If you're, already, if you're still doing retail arbitrage or um, private label or even wholesale and you're kind of in the weeds with that, it's really hard to add something new. So the accountability kind of says, hey, within 40 days, if I do all these different things, and we're not talking about hours of homework every night, you guys, just an hour or less. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. So doing the homework just keeps you accountable. Accountability just moves the needle. That's all it does. So if that's something you feel like it's for you, mommyincome.com forward slash challenge. I'd love to see you in the challenge. Okay. It start. Oh yeah. The challenge starts on uh, September 18th. So you have, I think up until the 17th to sign up and then we start the next day. It's going to be 1 PM Eastern time. That was majority rules. We put uh, three different times on our Facebook group to see uh, what would people would say and what was the best time for them. And that was the one that was chosen. So majority rules, 1 PM Eastern time. There will of course be replays and live on zoom. So uh, make sure that you just check it out see if it's right for you. Okay. Let's go to talking about football and entrepreneurship. And this applies to your Amazon business or any other business venture, any other, anything that you do. I really feel like these are correlations for real life and for sports and for business. So this is applicable for everyone, right? Number one, what is the one thing that we can learn from football, from any sport, right? Is I'm just going to put this out there first. You won't win every single game even on your best day. I know, right? I'm just going to start out of the gate with the negativity, right? Now, it's not really negative. This is realistic expectations. We are less, to, we are less, what is that what I'm trying to say? This is why we do this live, you guys. Like, you know, I have to think for a second sometimes. You can't win every single game. And if you have expectations for perfection, you're going to be let down so often. And oftentimes expecting perfection and failing is often why people quit. Well, they expected perfection. You can play your best. You can put your best foot forward. You can put all of the efforts in that you've practiced and worked on and still not win the game. I know it's disappointing, right? But the reality is you can always learn from losses. You can learn from mistakes. You can learn how to do things differently from a loss, far more, honestly, than you can from a win. And just to compare that to football, there's only been, what, five out of the history of football, five or six, team, six times that there have been an undefeated season, no perfect season except for the 72 Dolphins. Everybody I think knows that, where there was what, like 14 and 0, and then they won the Super Bowl, and you know, there's their playoffs and stuff like that. Um, the most recent, I think, was 2007, 16-0 Patriots. They did not win the Super Bowl that year. So even though they won all their regular season games, they didn't win the Super Bowl. You can't always win them all. It's possible. History shows it's possible. There's only a handful of teams. It's since the, what, 1900, like early 1920s, I think, in 100 years of football that have had a perfect season. So you can't win every single game. That also means in business, you're not going to thrive and survive and knock it out of the park every single time. You're going to have mistakes. You're going to have losses. You're going to lose money, period. Like, let me say that again for the people in the back that didn't hear me. You're in business. You're going to lose some money at some point. You're going to make a bad choice. You're going to have a bad player that doesn't keep up their end of the bargain and then screws you somewhere down the road. These are just things that happen. So expecting perfection always leads to a letdown. And you know what? Sometimes this is the cold, hard truth, y'all. I'm sorry that I have to say it, but I'm also not sorry because the more that we internalize this, the more we can just pick up and be like, okay, great. Expecting perfection always leads to disappointment because sometimes our perfection still isn't good enough. I know, right? That's yucky and hard to say. It's also true because we maybe we haven't arrived at that place yet. Our best might not be the winning team at that moment. Even in an individual sport, your best can sometimes just be not quite enough. And that's hard in this kind of world where everyone's screaming, you're enough, you're enough. It's true, 
You are enough just as you are. But that doesn't mean you're always going to win. That doesn't mean you're always going to be the best. It doesn't mean that every product you launch or every client that you serve is going to be a home run or a touchdown. <laughs> home run. I'm talking about football here, right? So that realistic expectation should let you just go, oh, that's a relief. You mean I don't have to be perfect? You mean I don't have to win every single game? You know, have, you don't know that quarterbacks are not 100% when they throw the ball? There's interceptions. There's dropped balls. There's fumbles. There's literally <laughs> when they, they get sacked because they couldn't even throw it in time. We cannot expect perfection. We can only do our best in the moment. That is required. I mean, at least by me. <laughs> do your best always, but sometimes, you know, it's like the participation trophy that goes on right now. Like doing your best doesn't always get you the results you want. Sometimes we have to do more. Sometimes we have to learn. Sometimes we're not ready yet for what um, we could expect when we are doing our best. So I don't say that to discourage you. I say that to actually help you really breathe a sigh of relief. You don't have to be perfect and you won't be. Even the best of the best aren't perfect and will still lose games and still lose matches and still drop passes. It happens. It's about what you learn from those dropped passes and those interceptions and those fumbles and those losses that lead to greatness. So if you've fallen, if you've lost, if you've struggled, my favorite phrase in my house right now, what'd we learn? What'd you learn? I let my kids fail. You know why? Because they learn from that. They're like, wow, shoot, that didn't work out. Now what? Right? How do we deal with that disappointment and struggle and loss and even on your best day still isn't right? Expectations of perfection. So let them go. You're going to have some losses. You can still be the best in the world with losses. Seriously. Ask Tom Brady. <laughs> Ask Patrick Mahomes. Of course, he's not quite the goat yet. He's got a few years left, but you know, we'll save that for another episode. <laughs> All right. So that's what we can learn. You cannot win every single game, right? Okay. Moving on. Be humble enough to punt. That's another thing that we can learn from football. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm going to assume, I'm going to say it a little bit lightly here because most people probably know like football and how it's worked and the rules and how it's played. But um, for those of you guys that maybe don't, I'm going to just give you a little brief insight. So each play, a team has a chance to score um, and they get four attempts to go 10 yards. If they go 10 yards, they get four more attempts and they're called downs, right? So you have four downs, right? What happens on third down or fourth down? If you don't get all of all 10 of your yards, you have an option. You could go for it and try to get the rest of the yardage that you didn't make up or you punt, meaning you kick it back to the other team and you take your chances and let them go and let your defense do the work. And then uh, when it's your turn again, you try to score again. When I say be humble enough to punt, what do we know about football? Nine out of 10 times, they're going to punt when they realize that they just don't have enough yardage. They can't just make it. If they, they go for it occasionally when it's like fourth and inches or fourth and one and they really believe in their offense or they got a really fun play or they're really, really close to the end zone, something like that. But oftentimes you have to realize that punting is part of the game. It is part of the game. And you have to be humble to be like, no, we're not going to get our yardage in this next thing. Because if not, you turn the ball over as is to the team right where it stands. If you don't make your next six yards or however much it is, you have to give the ball to the opposing team and they're that much closer to their end zone. So it takes humility and discipline to punt. Even though it's regular part of the game, you don't have to. You can go for it every time. But why don't we see that? Because calculated risk in a game is everything. And it's better off to give your offense a little bit of a break, a rest, recalibrate while your defense goes out there and does their job because that leads to my next thing. Defense is necessary in football and in life and in entrepreneurship, right? When you're humble enough to punt, that means you're saying, we're going to give this another go. We're going to take a step back. We're going to let our defense do the thing. So in business, you have to be humble enough to let something go, to realize this might not be the scoring period, but there'll be another one, right? Because you don't punch just one time a game. Sometimes it's several. 
right? Several times. You don't make it. You just don't make it. You just can't get there. The defense was too strong. Your offense dropped a pass. Your quarterback got sacked. Whatever the reason. But the reality is, punting is part of the game. So if you're not making the score that you want to make, it's okay to regroup and punt. Like, okay, I'm going to play a little defense now. Offense in Amazon world would probably be like, we're launching products, we're launching products, we're launching products. But sometimes we need to punt and realize we're not going to launch products. We're going to take care of the products we already have and we're going to recalibrate. That's really all it is. But we have to be humble enough to punt the ball when necessary. If it's third and nine and you don't make it, you got fourth and nine. You are punting the ball, especially if you're on, you know, if you're in the other team's red zone, right? Absolutely gonna punt from there, right? So understanding where you are and where you need to go, a recalibration of just, hey, you know what? It's okay. It's another play in the book that you can use. But that also leads to the de defense, right? Defense is essential. I've heard this over the years. I'm a Chiefs fan. So over the last few years, people have been uh, complaining about some of the defensive, um, the defense in the, the Chiefs. Um, they're great offense, great offense, great quarterback. Kelsey's great. You know, uh, Mahomes is great. All this different stuff. But what about that defense? What about that defense? Well, defense prevents your competitors the opposing team, AKA the opposing team, other Amazon sellers, creepy bad people from messing with what you've already done, messing with your offense, right? So your defense as an entrepreneur is your own protection, your trademarks, your documentation, your um, organization. That's a way you can be defensive. You know, Amazon loses your shipment and you have all of your invoices ready to just email them and saying, hey, this is missing over here. If your paperwork's organized, that's defense. That's just making sure that if there's problems, you are ready. You are ready to stop those competitors from blasting through and scoring, right? So that's part of your business. Be defensive. Your defense is essential. It's necessary. You have to rely on it. What do you need to defend yourself, your business, your products? And this is our digital assets, right? If you're serving clients, you need a good solid contract and hopefully a lawyer in your back pocket so that you don't get in trouble. You don't step on anybody's copyrights. You don't get uh, intellectual property violations from Amazon. Yeah, we know all about those. And if you have your own trademark and your own brand and your own brand registry, you're already being defensive, right? That is part of defense. And defense is not the whole game. It's just necessary, right? Okay. Defense in your business. Those are things that it could look like. So football is essential with def defensive, defending your end zone, defending them from scoring against you, right? You won't win every single game. You need to be humble enough to punt. And defense is necessary. My next thing is practice and training. Hmm. Fun facts for you. Um, I actually do some research on this stuff because I think it's really important, number one, to fact check. Um, I'm not going to give you false information. So I was looking on the internet and found out, I was wondering how often do these teams practice and play? Hours a day, y'all. This is their professional career. They don't do side hustles. They play professional football. They're expected to be elite. And what does it require from the elite? Practice daily. Not just daily practice with the team. They, they, the team practices are usually two or three times a week during the regular season, but they're expected to do drills and, speci and training, specific training for their specific positions and different private coaches and to hit the gym and to have endurance. And to, they have to take care of their bodies and make sure they don't get injured. They get injured, no go. Same thing with you, protecting your business so it doesn't get injured. Training and practice consistently. And they actually say the off season is even worse. You cannot get soft on the off season, right? So you can't, you know, maybe there's a couple of months off there, but in the meantime, it really is about practice and training, new training. They bring trainers in, experts. Let me ask you something. Are you practicing your business daily? What is it in your business that you're practicing? That means consistent effort on a schedule or um, something that you can literally set your clock by. 
oh, I post listings every day, or I post PPC campaigns every day, or I look at my reports every day, or what is it that you're doing daily to move your business forward, to hone your craft, to practice? What about training? Do you have any training? You have special training? Have you taken anything like PPC classes or um, advertising or sourcing 101 or learning how to source overseas? Just anything new. Are you learning new? Are you constantly in growth mode? Because if we're not in growth mode, we're standing still. We're going to be the washed up player that's the third stringer because they can't make the team because they're not, you know, they're not pushing themselves. I don't know. I'm just saying. What is it? How much are you practicing? How about just an hour a day? Is there training involved? Are you looking at any specialty training? Just things that we can learn. If we want to be good at something, we're going to have to put the work in. If we're gonna be good at selling online and entrepreneurship and being our own boss, we have to have discipline. I know, I know. It is the most unsexy word in most people's vocabulary. Like, oh, discipline. Mm. You know, like you hear the memes that are like, exercise, I thought you said extra fries. Like, I know, discipline is doesn't seem very fun until you win Super Bowls, until you're crushing it, and then people go, oh, well, what, what, what's your secret? You're like, no, there's no secret. Consistency is key. Specifics, being, being very specific about what you're consistent at is the key. So if you're doing something every single day, you're going to learn, you're going to get better, you're going to thrive. I was just, um, I was just having this debate with somebody um, that I quote unquote forced my uh, youngest child to take band again this year. Number one, I'm going to, before I get all this hate mail, I know people are going to be like, how dare you if she's not into it, whatever, save your judgments. I'm just going to tell you why. Number one, it is the only time in your life, at least in America, that if you go to public school you have the opportunity to have music lessons aka music class reading music playing music learning music for free five hours a week monday through friday for at least one hour my daughter goes to music class my son who's older like if he wanted to take music class if he wanted to take piano or something else i mean he's an excellent guitar player but um you'd have to pay as an adult there's no free so I'm like, take free music lessons now. She was in band last year. She kind of wanted to quit because her friends were not doing it again. And I'm like, oh no. I'm like, this is something that at least for another year or two through middle school, please just play. And she's she's very, very musically inclined. Um, so I, you know, she's very good and very talented at it. She, you know, it's not it's not also the worst thing, you know? So I'm just saying practice. She's getting better just by showing up an hour a day, even if she doesn't really think that's the best thing for her. Um, she's learning. She's learning how to read music. She's passing the test. She's playing. She can play with a band. She can play by herself. She can play by ear. So it's a valuable thing to have discipline and show up. If you do something every day for an hour, you will get better at it. I got better at cornhole in six months by playing for 15 minutes a day. So no excuses. If you really want something, it takes the discipline to show up. Showing up is half the battle. Showing up is half the battle. Practice and training. In order to get better, to stay better, to be your best, to do, like, leave it all. Well, they say leave it all on the field. To leave it all on the table means that you gave it your all. That you learned more and you applied more. And you know what? Those are the teams and the players that do the best and win. The ones that are, you know, they said that about Michael Jordan. They would say that about um, Tiger Woods even. Oh, he's the first one here and the last one out. And I'm not like promoting overworking and like the hustle culture kind of thing. What I'm saying is if you really, really want something and you want to do better and be better, no one has to tell you to show up. You already will, because this is what you want. You're gonna get up early and do it. You're gonna stay late and do it. You're gonna use some extra time to do some things that you wanna do because you have something you want to accomplish. Greatness comes at a cost. It's generally worth the price. I dare you to find out. I know you all have greatness within you. We let procrastination and fear and worry and thoughts about what other people's opinions are about what we're doing stop us from moving forward. 
So what if you have to punt? So what if you lost? Did you put the work in? Did you put the effort in? Keep doing that. Another thing we can learn. Don't have to do it all in one play. We have a lot of opportunities and to move the needle daily without having to get a touchdown with every play. It's a process. You don't go 100 yards. I mean, most of the time it's like 80 yards, right? We start at the, 80, the 20 or the 25, kind of have to go 80 yards, you know, whatever. Honestly, though, if we keep moving and making small progress, look, a football field's 100 yards. You don't always get there with one, you know, 80 yard pass. Although that happens and it's awesome and we all love those plays. Those are the big wins, right? The big plays, the Hail Marys, the one that you're like, oh, he just, you know, threw a bomb, you know, 72 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, those are the great moments. But the actual game is won a lot of times by the field goal kicker, really. It's won with accumulation of very small strategic plays. Same thing for your business. Small strategic plays add up. They add up to first downs. We don't need touchdowns every play. We need first downs, right? First down, new set of downs. You get to try it again. You get to go again. Some plays are two yards. Sometimes you have a loss. Sometimes you get a sack, but you get right back up and you run the next play. Small steps are still steps. Most touchdowns are an accumulation of tons of plays, a 15 minute drive even, you know, you see a lot of these long drives where they're in it and they're in it. They have setbacks and they go forward, setbacks and go forward. And eventually they finally get there, get all the downs that they need and they score. Same thing with you, small, consistent steps. Look about that first down instead of going, oh my gosh, I have 80 yards to go or hundred yards almost to go. That's overwhelming. You're like, no, you got 10. It's all you need is 10, the next 10, the next step. One thing at a time. You do not have to conquer the world and conquer Amazon and do all the things all the time and right away and in a hurry. Take your time. Think about your strategic plays. Think about what you want and what do you want to do next? They're all strategic plays. So take them one at a time. Next, not everybody has to be the superstar to still win and still have positive results. You don't have to be a million dollar seller to succeed on Amazon. What's your goal and why? It can be small. That's totally fine. You don't have to be, you know, we hear these great names, big names, you know, like Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady and, you know, back in the day, you know, Joe Montana and Barry Sanders and, you know, just a lot of, you know, Randy Moss, like a lot of big players, right? The, the superstars, the, I don't want to call them showboaters, but some of them are, you know, whatever. But what we don't hear is about, you know, Derek Thomas, linebackers, you know, the defensive ends, you know, the people that are really out there not showboating but still playing their best still showing up you know they might not be the most popular and the most named but they're very underrated they're out there doing their best so not everybody has to be the superstar you don't have to be a superstar you could just be exactly what you want to be but be the best at whatever you are for yourself you don't have to be the best in the world just bring forth your best even if you're the quiet behind the scenes type and if you're the in front of the camera, in front of the microwave type, <laughs> microwave, the microphone, excuse me, like me, that's okay too. Just be who you are, but be your best because that will be good enough. Good enough to move the needle for you. Don't measure everyone else's standards. Another thing we can learn from football, there's always going to be haters there's always going to be haters there's always going to be naysayers and haters and negativity and the yeah but and the this will never work and everything's saturated and blah 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 
question is, do you believe that? Do you believe that? A rise to greatness always brings opposition. There's always somebody that's jealous. There's always somebody that's willing to say all the negative things. There's always willing. There's always somebody willing to rain on your parade. With greatness comes opposition. It's going to come. Having realistic expectations about that, if you're successful over and over again, people will be jealous. People will be talking. People will tell you, oh, that works for you, but it'll never work for me. People will make excuses. They'll tell you, you slept your way to the top. They'll tell you, you bought your way to, you know, all kinds of things. You're going to have haters when you're successful, no matter what, no matter what kind of success you're having. People don't like it because they feel like, you know, the people that are haters, they look inward and they're like, oh, I can't do that. I'm not going to let them be happy if I can't be happy or I tried that and it didn't work and how come it's working for them. And it comes from a place of internal negativity for themselves. So there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people that are going to oppose you. It could be your sister. It could be your mother-in-law. It could be your father-in-law. It could be your husband, your wife, one of your kids, your neighbor. It could be. And those are real things and hard to deal with. I have wanted to cower in the corner and cry many times for a lot of things people have said to me. But greatness always comes with opposition. You have to just have that expectation and decide that you are who you are and you're doing what you're doing regardless if anyone likes it or cares. Because it's something you want for you. That's empowering. Nobody can take that from you. They can try. They can try to throw mud and throw rotten tomatoes and do all the things that they want to do, but it doesn't matter. You're still going to do what you're going to do. I mean, could you imagine if every the, every goat, we call them the goats, if they just quit every time someone said something bad about them? You know how many times people talked about Michael Jordan back in his heyday? Criticized him all kinds of way, this, that, and the other? Imagine if he was like, oh my gosh, they're right. I guess I should stop playing basketball. <laughs> Let's be real. It's just made to try to hurt someone because hurting people hurt people, right? So you're going to be haters. Not everybody has to be a superstar and you're going to have opposition. That's just the way it is. There are many, many, many unnamed, not unnamed, they're all named, um, players that none of us could ever name we couldn't even we could probably walk by them in the grocery store and they could be playing right now for our favorite team and we might not recognize them first of all football players wear helmets and it's really hard to always see their faces because we, we usually see them not their faces we see jersey names and numbers and we see plays like from the bird's eye view right so it's not like we're walking side by side with somebody there's a lot of people that play professional sports that you've never heard of it doesn't mean they're not great it doesn't mean they're not facing all these things you don't have to be a superstar to be successful. You can have your own success, big or small, whatever you want. It's up to you. Another hard thing. I'm going to say another hard thing. I know this is not popular, but you're replaceable. You're replaceable. Everyone's replaceable. And I know you're an entrepreneur. So you're thinking, oh, well, I can't, I'm going to fire myself. I'm going to replace myself. Yeah, actually. There is someone out there that can do what you're doing. Maybe even better. Isn't that hard? Yeah, it is hard. That keeps us humble and keeps us excellent. Be excellent, no matter who's watching or not watching. Why? Because it's self-respect to be your best, to show up your best. There's nothing worse than failure on top of the fact that you know you didn't put it all out there. I mean, failure is bad enough on its own. But when you go, oh, well, I failed and I know why. Because I just didn't give it my all. I didn't practice. I didn't do all this. I just kind of showed up half-assed. And I was like, kind of gave it a half-assed effort. And that's what I get. That's even worse. Because you know you deserve it. And you earned it. I don't know if that's worse. Is it worse to do your absolute best and still not get the result you want? Maybe. I feel like I can walk with my head high going, I did everything I can. If I didn't win, that's okay because I still did all that I could do and I did the best I could do. And I can be proud of that walking away. So saying that you're replaceable means that there's usually someone behind you that wants to do more, that they're willing to do more, that will do what you're doing plus some. Let that motivate you to do your best. 
Because even football players, they think just because they sign contracts, if they don't hold up their end of the deal, their contract can be canceled. They can be traded. If you're not what you cracked up to be, you're replaceable. But that pushes us to earn and keep our position. And whether that's on a football team or as an entrepreneur, nothing's guaranteed. So work for it. You won't be disappointed in yourself if you put in the effort and you learn the skills and you put them into practice. But if you make excuses and you say, yeah, but and I'm like, I don't know, all the naysaying and not actually putting in effort, that won't lead to results that, you're, that are desirable. Two more things. Take a time out. There's three timeouts, right, in each half of football. I don't know. I'm like failing myself, like wondering. <laughs> yeah, three timeouts that each team gets per half. That's six per game. Take a timeout. Why? It helps you to stop and think and reevaluate. If you're wanting to pull the trigger on a product and you're not sure, Sleep on it for 24 hours. Take a time out. But give yourself a timeline because there's a fine line between overthinking and analysis paralysis and never making a move and rushing headlong into just this great idea that I know it's going to work and I'm not going to, you know, it's all sunshines and rainbows. Like there's two sides of this camp, right? Take a time out. I dare you. If you're, if you're like a rush into it and the glass is always half full optimist, that, that's me. Like, I like, like, oh my gosh, this is a great idea. Let's do it. And my husband's my balance of being like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Let's think. Let's look at the other options and all the case scenarios before we start rushing into something. It's a nice balance. Taking a time out. I have learned. I've had to learn because I'm one of those. Like, rush into it. Just get it done and see what happens. And that's great a lot of times. And a lot of times it's not. So there needs to be a good balance and a timeout is perfect for that. If I have a great idea and I have, you know, sometimes these great ideas that keep me up at night and then I have to get like paper and pen and write it all out and brain dump and make a flow chart and figure it all out and be like, okay, we're, we're executing this tomorrow, right? And in reality, it's a six month project and it's not launching tomorrow. Um, but I've given myself this timeout period where it's like, okay, this is a great idea and I'm glad you got all your thoughts out. But now we're going to sleep on it for 24 hours and we're going to see if the facts and the feelings still look the same after 24 hours, after maybe even 48 hours where my, you know, initial excitement wears off and I really see the reality of pros and cons and make a good solid decision. Because the opposite side of that is also getting stuck in analysis paralysis and the negative and it never works and then you never pull the trigger and either way leads to destruction. Either running headlong into an idea that you think is awesome without really fully fleshing it out can cause a lot of money and problems and issues and never taking any action prevents you from moving forward so we're stuck in this in between take a time out it doesn't mean scrap it and it doesn't mean you're not going to do it and it doesn't mean that you are going to do it it just means that you're taking a time out to reevaluate the strategy behind your decisions that's what it is to stop the momentum of your op opposition can be a timeout. You know, they say icing the kicker, right? When the kicker's getting ready to kick that winning field goal and the opposing team calls a timeout. It's simply psych psychological. They want to psych out the kicker to be like, okay, here's another minute and a half where we have to wait a minute um, or even a couple of minutes to then re-kick or kick again or start over. And sometimes it can ruin the momentum and sometimes it, it doesn't. It's like, no, I still got this, right? Take a time out. It's okay to pause. Nothing's going to fall apart, even if you pause for a week or more. Really, I've tried this. I've had an amazing and difficult couple of years, and I've taken a lot of timeouts, which has really helped me to focus on what's really important. But especially, I mean, no offense to our men, um, but especially as women, we're a lot of times very production oriented and very much get it done and multitasking and taking care of everyone and very nurturing and very busy body-ish. Um, so it's really hard for a lot of women and probably a lot of men too, to take a time out and pause 
and reevaluate and just rest. It's okay to take a time out. Every single football team, every single game, there's barely timeouts left at the end of the game. Why? Because they know they need it. Even if it's for two minutes, regather, regroup, which leads me to my final thing that we as entrepreneurs can learn from football. You can't do it without a coach, without leadership and mentorship and coaching. Coaching isn't telling you what to do. Let me show you what it is. This is what a coach is. This is my favorite thing, right? This is what this says. I love this. A passionate, dedicated individual who unlocks hidden potential and maximizes a team's performance by believing, encouraging, and developing. Coach. Love it. I love that. I am a coach. Of course. But you can't coach football. We can't have football without a coach. They have multiple coaches. Not just a head coach. A quarterback coach. Defensive coordinators. Offensive coordinators. Line coaches, all kinds of mentorship specialists, coaches, someone to help you maximize your potential, someone who sees it. The other day, I got to watch an interview with Patrick Mahomes, of course, my favorite thing, my favorite player. Um, but what's so amazing about this young man is number one, his humility. Never once do you really hear him talking about himself and being the best and this and that. He's constantly talking about improvement and getting better, better and getting stronger and learning from the best of the best. And this past interview that I just saw a few days ago was fantastic. And one of the things he said, you know, what has really, really, really been pivotal in your career and being here in this, and he absolutely hands down said, I have the best coach there is. He works with what I like doing. He allows me to take risks. He um, shapes me into the player that I am. And they have such a great relationship because they trust each other. He trusts the authority and the experience of his coach. And the coach, Reed, trusts him to execute properly, to take the risks, to do the thing he's doing, trusts his talent, trusts his, um, his training and his practice. Look, there wouldn't be that trust factor there if he was skipping practice and skipping workouts and constantly, you know, on social media, partying with friends. I mean, yeah, that happens, whatever. But the relationship between the coach and the player is essential. A connection and a trust and an accountability and the willingness to be taught comes with humility. Realizing I don't know it all. I can't know it all. And I would love to learn from people that can help me shortcut my success, short, fast track it, really. And that's when you see some of these great, great players that have amazing coaches. It, they haven't done it on their own. I loved hearing Patrick Mahomes say that the other day in the interview. He really simply said, I have the best team and the best coaching staff. It's not just me. Yes, that is so true. It's a team effort. Even in entrepreneurs, of course you can't play football without a team. It is not a one-man sport. We all know this. But you're only as strong as your weakest link when it comes to team effort. So you have to be a good leader and a good have a good leader and a good coach and all that. And sometimes that starts with leading and coaching yourself. Understanding and being willing to be molded, being humble enough to accept feedback and help and okay i'll try that same thing with entrepreneurship somebody's already done what you're trying to do and it's faster and easier if you just reach up and ask them hey how'd you do this can i learn a little bit from you even crumbs off your table will help me i remember in the beginning of my business in the beginning of e-commerce, I was so hungry for information and also very, very broke. I could not buy the books and sign up for coaching. There wasn't hardly any coaching at all. I mean, Amazon FBA was still new when I was still joining. So there was some people ahead, 
um, but not too many. And as they started to develop, I did everything. Like Chris Green at one point, he's the, I call him the godfather of retail arbitrage. He wrote kind of the first book on it and he's been that way um, since. He put his phone number in the book and he encouraged people to call him on the phone and just chat with him. And I thought that was the best thing I ever heard. I mean, for free? So I opened that book, I saw that number and I was like, oh my gosh, it took me a couple of days to like build up the courage to call because I was like, what am I gonna say? So I literally developed all these questions. I'm like, I don't wanna take too much of his time, but I do wanna ask him all these things. That phone call changed my life and it was absolutely free because there was a mentor and a coach willing to give me an hour of his time to ask some questions. Now, I don't say that without the caveat of knowing that coaches and, and um, mentors and trainers and teachers shouldn't be paid for their work. I mean, go ask Andy Reid how much he makes a year. Just saying. Most coaches and, and consultants and mentors and things like that um, are paid very well. And some of them are volunteer. And eventually when I do that, I'm going to be a volunteer coach. Yeah. So I'm just here to tell you and remind you as entrepreneurs, we can learn a few things about football. Having a team, having a coach, taking a timeout, being humble enough to change directions, punt the ball, not having expectations that you're going to win every single time, doing your best, being your best, no matter what, practice and training. You don't have to do it all in one sitting, in one play, in one strategy. You're irreplaceable if necessary. Someone will do it if you won't. Don't have to be a superstar. And finally, it takes time to develop a winning team. It doesn't happen overnight or with one player or with one season. It takes time to develop and build the chemistry that you need, the proper formula to move forward. So here's me encouraging you to practice some of these things, take it into consideration. You need a coach, it doesn't have to be me. I mean, I'd be honored, but it doesn't have to be me. There's plenty of amazing, good teachers out there, mentors, coaches. You can reach out to SCORE, a small business association. SCORE is um, retired executives that like, like to mentor people just in business in general, and it's free and you can get in score.org, I believe. Um, so if you want a free business mentor um, by a retired executive, reach out to SCORE. There's a lot of free opportunities out there. Now, they're not necessarily going to be interest industry based, um, but they can still help. So if you can't afford or it's not in the budget right now, that's my favorite phrase. I hate can't afford, honestly. Um, because it's true, but I don't like saying it that way. It's more of a negative thing to where it's like, I need to save up for, or it's not in the budget yet. Invest in yourself and in training. If you want to be better, you're going to need to ask for help. Can't do it on your own. You're not meant to. You shouldn't. That's what causes stress and burnout. There are free options if your budget is tight. There's also many paid options if your budget is not, especially if you have resources. If you have more money or more resources than most people, invest in yourself, getting a coach, getting accountability, uh, training, somebody that will actually hold your hand and do it. You know why? Because it will get you there faster. Not gonna sugarcoat that. So the question is, what kind of player are you gonna be this season? I know y'all could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I know I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. You can always reach out to us at mommyincome.com with any questions. If you have any questions about that, don't forget the bundle challenge, mommyincome.com forward slash challenge. That's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. And I'd love to see you there. So see you guys, same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.